but first let me say uh, a little bit about this year. In last year's final press conference, I said that 2014 would be a year of action and would be a breakthrough year for America, and it has been. Uh, yes, there were crises that we had to tackle around the world, uh, many that were unanticipated. Uh, we have more work to do to make sure our economy, our justice system, and our government work not just for the few, but for the many. But there is no doubt that we can enter into the new year with renewed confidence that America is making significant strides where it counts. The steps that we took early on to rescue our economy and rebuild it on a new foundation helped make 2014 the strongest year for job growth since the 1990s. All told, over a 57-month streak, our businesses have created nearly 11 million new jobs. Almost all of the job growth that we've seen have been in full-time positions. Much of the recent pickup in job growth has been in higher paying industries. And in a hopeful sign for middle class families, wages are on the rise again. Our investments in American manufacturing have helped fuel its best stretch of job growth also since the 1990s. America is now the number one producer of oil, the number one producer of natural gas. We're saving drivers about 70 cents a gallon at the pump over last Christmas. And effectively, today, our rescue of the auto industry is officially over. We've now repaid taxpayers every dime and more of what my administration committed, and the American auto industry is on track for its strongest year since 2005. And we've created about half a million new jobs in the auto industry alone. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, about 10 million Americans have gained health insurance just this past year. Enrollment is beginning to pick up again during the open enrollment period. The uninsured rate is at a near record low. Since the law passed, the price of health care has risen at its slowest rate in about 50 years. And we cut our deficits by about two-thirds since I took office, bringing them to below their 40-year average. Meanwhile, around the world, America is leading. We're leading the coalition to degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL, a coalition that includes Arab partners. We're leading the international community to check Russian aggression in Ukraine. We are leading the global fight to combat Ebola in West Africa. And we are preventing an outbreak from taking place here at home. We're leading efforts to address climate change, including last month's joint announcement with China that's already jump-starting new progress in other countries. We're writing a new chapter in our leadership here in the Americas by turning a new page on our relationship with the Cuban people. And in less than two weeks, after more than 13 years, our combat mission in Afghanistan will be over. Today, more of our troops are home for the holidays than any time in over a decade. Still, uh, many of our men and women in uniform will spend Christmas in harm's way, and they should know that the country is united in support of you and grateful not only to you but also to your families. The six years since the crisis have demanded hard work and sacrifice on everybody's part. But as a country, we have every right to be proud of what we've accomplished. More jobs more people insured, a growing economy, shrinking deficits, bustling industry, booming energy. Pick any metric that you want, America's resurgence is real. We are better off. Now, I've always said that recovering from the crisis of 2008 was our first order of business. And on that business, America's outperformed all of our other competitors. Over the past four years, we've put more people back to work than all other advanced economies combined. We've now come to a point where we have the chance to reverse an even deeper problem, the decades-long erosion of middle class jobs and incomes, and to make sure that the middle class is the engine that powers our prosperity for decades to come. But to do that, we're going to have to make some smart choices. We've got to make the right choices. We're going to have to invest in the things that secure even faster growth in higher paying jobs for more Americans. 
uh, and I'm being absolutely sincere when I say I want to work with this new Congress to get things done, to make those investments, to make sure the government's working better and smarter. We're going to disagree on some things, but there are going to be areas of agreement, and we've got to be able to make that happen. And that's going to involve compromise every once in a while. And uh, we saw during this lame duck period that perhaps that spirit of compromise uh, may be coming to the fore. In terms of uh, my own job, uh, I'm energized. Uh, I'm excited uh, about the prospects for the next couple of years. And I'm certainly not going to be stopping uh, for a minute uh, in the effort to make life better for ordinary Americans. Uh, because thanks to their efforts, uh, we really do have a new foundation that's been laid. We are better positioned than we have been in a very long time. A new future is ready to be written. Uh, we've set the stage for, uh, for this American moment. And I'm going to spend every minute of my last two years uh, making sure that we seize it. Um, my presidency is entering the fourth quarter. Uh, interesting stuff happens in the fourth quarter. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but, you know, going into the fourth quarter, you usually get a timeout. I'm now looking forward to a quiet timeout, uh, Christmas with my family. Uh, so I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy New Year. Uh, I hope that all of you get some time to spend with your families as well, because um, one thing that we share is that uh, we're away too much from them.